everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. What's happening down in Pine Ridge? Well, Lum and Abner are very much excited over the possibilities of their new business venture and are anxiously awaiting the completion of their store on wheels. Caleb Weehunt, the local blacksmith who is building the big body on the chassis of Abner's old car, promises to have it ready for service within the next few days. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears over at Abner's house discussing the new enterprise. Listen. Yes, sir, I believe that's a good idea you and Lum's got studied up there, Abner. Oh, it's going to be the handiest thing at all, Grandpa. Let's say the women folks coming downtown to do their trade. See, we'll stop in front of everybody's house in town every day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Charity can't hardly wait till you get started. No, and we can drive over to some of these other towns around here, too. It'll be just like having a chain store. And I don't know, Abner, about driving it to these other towns. Well, they can't keep us from it. No, but big as that thing is, I don't believe that car will ever pull it over there for us. Well, I thought myself that Caleb was making it a little too big, but Plum said it's got to be that big so we can get all the merchandise in it. Why, you get that thing out on the road, could nobody get around you. It'll take up the whole road by itself. Well, they can just back up or turn around and go the other way when they see us coming. Yeah, and there'll be a bunch of complaints, too. Now, mind what I tell you. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Mike could build some side tracks along the road. Whenever we pass somebody, well, they can just sort of go off on the side and like a train does when we get by. And if you want my notions on it, it's a way on or too big. You're going to have trouble with it. Well, Grand Pass has got to be that big. Got to be big enough for folks to stand up in, walk around, pick out what they want. You may as well just put some wheels on a regular store building. Might not as big as Dick Huddleston's store. Well, of course, it looks a heap bigger down there in a blacksmith shop than it would outside. It's 14 foot wide and 24 foot long. That's what it is. Yeah, but if it's me a building... Well, I, I do would... know. There comes old Lum. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I seen him down to the blacksmith shop a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, he was telling me all about the new store on wheels. He's awful enthusiastic about it. Yeah. Told me the plans he had drawn off and all. Yeah, well, I can't tell nothing about them drawings he's got there. I never said nothing, or <laughs> Never wanted to hurt his feelings. <laughs> no, of course not. I never let on either. Well, good morning, Lum. Uh, good morning. Come good on morning. up on the gallery and say it. Shut up. Shut up, Blue. Huh? I was talking to this hound here. Banners me every time I come on the plate. Hey, shut up, Blue. Get on back under the house there. You better get out of them flower beds anyway before Elizabeth catches you and takes a stick of soul wood to you. Do what? Nothing, nothing. Come on up in the shade and say it. I was talking to Blue. Yeah, me and Abner are just talking about your new store, Lum. Yeah, yeah, everybody is, I reckon. Who do you think come over to see me while I go, Abner? I don't know. Who? Snake Holdings. Well. Yeah, he heard about us going to open up a traveling grocery store, and now then he's changed his mind, wants to sell us a jot him down store back. He does. Yeah, he said he'd take us up on the proposition we offered him the other day. Your car and three hundred and fifty dollars for a down payment. Well, he's just too late. Yeah, it's just what I told him too. He wasn't interested. No. Uh, what you got there? Uh, 
Oh, these are some letters that come to us. Letters? Yeah, Dick just handed them to me down the store a while ago. Huh? Names for our new store. Oh! <laughs> I opened one or two of them up. Some right good ones in there, too. Well, I do know. Folks that already send them in, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking there from, uh, well, now here's one from Lawrence, Kansas. For the land, thanks. And here's one from Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, let me see some of the names they sent in, Lon. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, get. read some of them. Well, here's a good one here, I thought. Yeah, this one. It's from Decatur, Illinois. They say to call it the uh, Merchandise Express. Yeah? Well, now, that's all right. That makes a good name for her. <laughs> yeah, I've got a good name studied up, Ron. Me and Charity heard your announcement about the contest on the party line day before yesterday. Let's see, what was it? Oh, yeah, roly-poly. <laughs> roly-poly. Wow. Well, don't be telling us about it. Send it in so you'll get a chance at them prizes. Yeah. Well, I've been aiming to, just been putting it off. That's just the trouble. A lot of folks have been putting it off till the contest will be over, first thing you know. And the name they had in mind might have been the very one the judges picked out for one of the winners. My sure, they can't <laughs> win unless they send them in. They ought to know that, no. Now, I bound you, there's lots of folks who's got names studied up right now that's just neglecting to send them in. Why, well, sure they have. We ought to call them up on the party line again, Abner, and remind everybody when they think up a name that way to send it in before they forget it. Yeah, yeah, we are. We sure had. I, I wish we'd have thought about doing that sooner. Ain't no telling what kind of a name the judges is going to like the best. Well, now, if you want to make another announcement on the party line, Mom, my telephone's right there in the hall. Well, I'm so dirty, I hate to go in the house. They've been helping Caleb down there at the blacksmith shop all morning. Oh, well, that's all right. Elizabeth and Pearl's out in the field anyway. Yeah, it's awful hard to be working in the field today, Abner. Yeah, yeah, I don't see how they stand it out there in that sun. I sure don't. But it had to be dead. The weeds were just about to take that cotton. Now, you call them up this time, Abner. I told them about the contest before. Oh, I, I can't make no speech on a party line, Mom. Well, all you got to do is remind them to be sure and send in a name. I'd love to get everybody on the party line to send in one name if we can. Oh, yeah, sure. They've always been mighty nice about helping us this way. <laughs> love for them all to have a chance at them prizes. Yeah. They've all been nice about sending in for the Pine Ridge news and them flashlights and one thing and another. Well, come on in. I'll try it around. If I get mixed up, well, you can sort of tell me what they think. Now, wait a minute, fellas. I believe that's Squire Skimp driving up out there in front there. Yeah, well, yeah, we better wait till he leaves now, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, he's just stopping. Yeah, he might be looking for me. I ain't saw him in three or four days. <laughs> Expect you wondering why I ain't been selling no more stock in that silver mine. <laughs> Uh, what's the latest developments on the silver mine, Lum? I ain't heard nothing about it in the last day or so. Well, I ain't neither, Grandpa. I've been so busy trying to get this new store hour started, I ain't had time to think about it. Well, yeah, howdy, Squire. Yeah, good morning, Squire. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Well, you men seem to be taking life easy, sitting out here in the chair, Yeah, <laughs> hey, come on up and sit down, Squire. Yeah, here, take this chair. No, no, I can't stay, man. Just keep your seat, keep your seat, sir. I uh, just down to the blacksmith shop there, uh, looking over that new store you're building. I uh, believe you've got a good idea there, man, if it's uh, properly handled. Uh, well, what about that silver mine, Squire? We were just talking about that. Uh, uh, what's the latest news on it? Well, I'm glad you broke that up, Van Beff. I so am. I, I just got a letter here this morning from uh, this man Worthington. You know, that's the fellow that was here a few days ago, you know. Yeah. Made us offer on the mine, and... Uh, Got this letter here. He's made us a little better offer on it this time. Uh, Granny's let's sell it to him, then. No, no, now, Lum, now, let's not be hasty, you know. In catching a fish, why, you always want to wait till he takes the bait before you pull the line. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he jerk when he gets to nibbling, and you might lose him, you know. <laughs> now, uh, he's offered us a million and one hundred thousand dollars. But I believe he'll go higher. I may run out there in Arizona myself the next few days and see if I can close a deal with him. Now, Granny, that is a sounding good. But now, uh, what I came over to see you gentlemen about, or uh, that store of yours, that uh, store on wheels. You know, I like that idea mighty well. And I was uh, going to offer to trade you some stock in my silver mine for a third interest in your store, but uh, I got this letter, and <laughs> I guess now I'd be foolish to do it. But on account of you two being such old friends around... Well, Squire, before you go any further, I can tell you right now, we ain't interested. No. 
In the first place, there ain't room on there for three of them. No. Well, now you're passing up a golden opportunity, man. Or I might say a silver opportunity. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the truth, Squire, if this store on wheels is just half as good as I think it is, we've got a gold mine right here in Pine Ridge. We don't need no more stock in your field. Huh? It's always a good sign that there's some money to be made in the proposition when Squire Skimp tries to procure an interest. Bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time.